Hello YouTube, this is Scott Grammer and I am the old audio guy and we're finally here for part two of the Phase Linear 700 rebuild. Now, in the first video, which if you haven't seen it, here is a link. I'll put it in the upper right hand corner of your screen right now. If you have seen it, then you remember what all we did to this amplifier. This was a very early Phase Linear 700, which we did basically a complete rebuild of. It got new filter capacitors. It got new bypass capacitors across those filters. It got an entirely new audio driver board. It got a speaker relay board, and it got new output transistors and new insulators installed under the output transistors and under the driver transistors. It also got a set of bias compensation transistors, which were not properly installed at the factory. So with all that done, the client took the unit home and was absolutely thrilled with it uh, until he took it to his father's house and his father tried it out in his system. And when they turned on the power switch, it threw a breaker in his father's house, which sometimes happens with the phase linear 700. It happened the first time I powered on the one that I owned 30 some odd years ago. Uh, essentially what it is, is the power supply in these things is so massive and it's strictly a brute force power supply. There is no finesse to it at all. Bob Carver's uh, idea was if your circuit can't handle this amplifier, get another circuit. So that was basically his philosophy, but we can't really do that all the time. So what I told the client was bring it back and I will design and install a soft start circuit based on the one in the Pioneer SX1980 but with a little bit heavier components. And that's what I did. So in this picture, you can see the components that make up the soft start circuit, two power resistors and a very large 30 amp uh, relay, actually called a contactor, made by Omron. Uh, this contactor is about twice as strong as the one used in the Pioneer SX1980, simply because this amplifier can draw a tremendous amount of current when it's cranked up loud into four ohm loads. So uh, the three components are the relay and two power resistors. One is a four ohm 20 watt resistor and the other is a 4,000 ohm 10 watt resistor. Here you can see the contactor mounted in the chassis of the amplifier. It's at the bottom directly in front of the speaker relay board. And here you can see I have put the contacts of the contactor in series with the AC power line. Here I have attached leads to the 4 ohm 20 watt power resistor. And here I have mounted that power resistor in the chassis above the contactor and connected it in parallel with the contacts. So the idea is that when you first turn on the power, the AC current is limited by this 4 ohm resistor. So it reduces the turn on current and thus makes it easier for the amplifier to start up slowly and not throw any circuit breakers anywhere. The 4000 ohm resistor is then wired in series with the relay coil and the combination is connected to the 200 volt power supply of the amplifier here. So the circuit works like this. When you first turn on the power, AC power is supplied to the power transformer through the 4 ohm resistor. And that resistor limits the amount of current that can get to the power transformer and keeps it from throwing the circuit breaker in your house. It takes about a third of a second this way to charge the filter capacitors to full voltage. And once that happens, the relay is turned on, bypassing the resistor and allowing the amplifier to have unfettered access to all the juice it wants up to the point where it blows the fuse in the amplifier, which isn't going to happen unless you're doing something wrong. So now when you turn on the amplifier, it sounds like this. Now in the previous video, I promised you the results of the testing of this amplifier. And so here are those results, read them and weep. Measured one channel at a time, this thing did a massive 523 watts RMS into eight ohms from the left channel at clipping and 520 watts RMS into eight ohms from the right channel at clipping. Total harmonic distortion with a 10 watt sine wave was 0.05% on both channels and total harmonic distortion at the rated 350 watts per channel out, running both channels at once, was 0.023% on the left channel and 0.03% on the right channel. The frequency response at one watt was within a half dB from 20 to 22,000, and the noise was essentially too low for me to measure more than 90 decibels below one watt. In other words, it's dead quiet. This is about all anybody can ask from a solid state amplifier. It's not going to have tube character because it doesn't have tubes, but then sometimes you don't want tube character. You just want to be able to play ZZ Top at 125 decibels. And this amp 
can do it if your speakers can handle it. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.